Today I'm south of the River Thames here at Epsley United FC for a brand new Around the Ground. I'll be exploring the Cufflink Stadium, taking a look through this club's 77 year history, speaking with manager Dennis Kutrieb and watching the team take on Haven and Waterlooville in a top of the table National League South clash. Let's go. Epsley United were formed in 1946 as Gravesend and North Fleet after a merger between Gravesend United and North Fleet United before changing to their current name in 2007. Between 2008 and 2013, the club were owned by My Football Club, a really interesting company. 27,000 members of My FC from across 120 different countries pay £35 each, raising £700,000, which is enough to fund the takeover. Those members were then able to vote on major decisions at Ebsleet, such as transfers, budgets, ticket prices and more, instead of a select board doing so. My FC's interest in taking over Ebsleet was announced in 2007, after exploring other options including Mansfield Town and Halifax Town. The deal went through in 2008, but eventually interest decreased and the club was sold. My FC went on to briefly sponsor fellow National League Southside, Slough Town. In 2008, the club won the FA Trophy for the first time, beating Torquay United 1-0 in front of 40,000 supporters at Wembley Stadium. Epsley play here at Stonebridge Road. The ground was opened in 1905 and has been home to Epsley for their whole existence. The stadium has a current capacity of 4,769, but its record attendance here is 12,032, achieved when playing Sunderland in the 1963 FA Cup fourth round. Epsley United's club shop was really nice and it featured a range of merchandise that we hadn't seen at other clubs before such as road signs and the more usual things like shirts, books, however they didn't have scarves which was quite surprising although I think they just ran out on the day. The clubhouse sold drinks and snacks and on the walls were pictures and worn shirts including this one from the FA Trophy final back in 2008. We also took a look in the club's hospitality suite, which had its own bar, TV showing rugby and places to sit to eat your meal. Well as usual we got some food and there were so many options here at Epsleet today, uh, tea huts everywhere, they had German sausages, um, this place called Eat Street, this is where we've chosen to eat uh, and it looks like we've made the right choice. I've gone with the Streetwise Burger, this has got pulled pork, cheese, onion rings. Uh, onions as well, lettuce, all of that. Uh, you've got the street. I don't know. <laughs> something. The, I think it's Eat Street Special. That's yeah. got mushrooms, uh, bacon, all of that as well. And then we've gone with some loco fries. This is uh, freshly cooked chips, cheese, and chili as well. This is a massive meal. Got a Pepsi, and that came to twenty-four pounds, which is not bad to be honest for all of this. Um, Will it be as good as last week's Bog Burger though? That's the question, so I know. let's tug in, uh, tuck in, rather. What's it like? Mm. Just as good. Just as good as the Bog Burger. Looks a mouthful as well. Right, I'm going to tuck in because we've got a lot of eating to do. Look at the size of them. This season the club play in the National League South and today they're taking on Haven and Waterlooville in a massive clash. Epsleet currently sit top of the league and haven't are two places below, but 10 points behind in third. This unusually large gap between first and third means that if Epsleet win today, they'd go 13 clear of third, 9 points clear of second, which gives them a great chance of winning the league this season or at least getting promotion somehow, with not much competition around. The last time these two teams did meet, Epsleet ran out 1 0 winners away at haven't back in November last year. Before the match, we heard from Dennis Kutrieb manager of Epsleet United, on his thoughts going into the game. Just tell us generally how have and Waterlooville been playing, what sort of style they've been playing and whether you they had been recently you might expect a bit of a change today. Are they direct? Are they more coming out from the back? No, um, they're very, very direct. So uh, start long with the goalkeeper, tried to win a header, the tall strike up top, or a half-handed uh, tall strike up top was Jason Pryor. Uh, now, uh, then, as I said already, with Danny Wright coming in, everyone knows him, he's good in the air as well, so they try to find him, that he can win the headers and try to get in behind of us. Was a, maybe was a quick second striker, uh, was Mohamed uh, Ufal. He normally plays on the wing, but he might play as a second striker today, that they try to can hurt us, uh, hurt us with pace in behind. Uh, but we will see in the first few minutes, so we expect a very direct game from us. We expect that they press very, very high and very, very intense, so we need to be very careful. 
we need to find the right solutions and at the same time we, sh uh, we have to show much composure today to come out and um, escape from their pressing uh, to go forward because if they press us higher we can break the pressing what, what the idea in general is then we will find many many gaps in behind. Both teams are then ready for kickoff in this exciting encounter. The game started off fairly evenly, but the first real chance of it went having Waterlooville's way. Mo Fowl played through on goal, but his shot was wide from an acute angle. But Hepsleep began to start passing the ball around nicely, getting into the game, and this same ball from the left to the right side of the pitch kept being played over and over again. And as you can see in this clip, and the next one as well, it was really opening it up for Hepsleep. The fleet were really starting to dominate, and in the 23rd minute, Bingham, who's shot, or was it a cross, I guess we'll never know, fell to Polian at the back post, who was ready to tap the ball home into the back of the net to make it 1-0 to Ebb's fleet. Haven't hit back, and Mofal had yet another chance to score. But this one was straight into the arms of Mark Cousins. On the half an hour mark, a haven't player was fouled on the edge of the box, giving themselves a really good free kick in a dangerous position. Charlie Ruff's shot seemed destined for the top corner, but a spectacular save from Cousins denied him his ninth goal of the season. Fancy flick from Sterling James started an absolute attack. But Bingham's cross was cleared by the Haven defence. Throughout the game, Ebsleet played out from the back and done so well with it. Constant pressure from the Haven attackers didn't phase them at all, and they passed the ball around comfortably until a ball could be played long to start an attack. And that was all the action for the first half, Ebbsleet leading 1-0. A couple of minutes into the second half, Bingham played a lovely ball through to Edsa, who had a great opportunity to score, however his shot was blocked by Nembard. On the 50 minute mark, Sterling James was brought down in the area, and the referee gave a penalty to Ebbsleet. But Sharman Lowe went the right way and saved Bingham's effort. At the other end of the pitch, Mo Fowl had a great chance to score, his deflected shot having to be tipped over the bar by Cousins. And a couple of minutes later, there was a really scrappy situation and somehow the ball didn't end up in the back of the net. Edgefleet got away with one there. Emotions had boiled over and there were some incidents on and off the pitch where fans and players came together. In the dying moments of the game, all Ebsleet's stress was relieved. Franklin Dommy 
running through the defence and slotting the ball home past the keeper to make it 2-0 to the fleet, wrapping up the win. And that was full time. Absolute 2, having a more to lose the nil. After the game, we heard once again from the manager of Ebb's Fleet, Dennis Coutry. Yep. Dennis Coutry, after Ebb's Fleet 2, haven't you all to lose the nil? You've done the double over heaven. That's uh, quite an accomplishment, isn't it, this season? Yeah, that's amazing. So you can see they are with us on the table and to get six points out of them, can't ask for anything more. Than Great game of football. You could see both ends could have scored goals. Um, obviously, for me as a manager, you always want to yeah, get the game done and get the goals done when they are possible. We had a good chance for Storm second uh, first half where he need to score the second goal already, and then with a penalty, obviously early in the second half where we had a good good spell. So then the the game might be a little bit more or a little bit easier. You never know in football, but um, that's how it felt today. Uh, but at the end of the day, the only thing what made us are um, three points, and that's good. Mark's save from the Charlie Ruff free kick in the first half is absolutely a top draw. It was a great save. Uh, I think it was, to be fair, was a goal, goal, um, goalkeeper's corner. But uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, take anything away from him there with a great save. Uh, well done. And the goalkeeper for Adam did deny you a penalty. Well, you took the penalty, Rakish took the Bingham, took the penalty, and he got down and uh, saved it and turned it away. That, that would have made life a little easier than if that kind of got in. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. So we need to score the second goal earlier. I think we have had enough chances to score the second goal. And then it's not so much end to end because you could see they wanted to push for the equaliser. And we needed to stay calm and not push too much forward to score the second goal because you can always get heard on a counter break so we need to be a bit careful and uh, that's what we have done. An outstanding goal then from Franklin Domi, for my feeling a little bit too late uh, but at the end of the day as I said the only thing what matters is three points that we have, what we have got today and a uh, big credit to the boys because they were working hard but yeah as you said uh, even with Dom in the first half then the penalty in the second half and a few other chances we need to score earlier in the second goal and then the life probably would have been a little bit easier for us. That, you mentioned the Franklin Domi goal late in the game, I think two minutes remaining before time added on. Uh, but I mean, he, it was a solo goal. He made it himself, t took it into the box and fired the ball into the net. I mean, he, he claims to be a left back, I think, but I mean, he, he really has got an eye for goal. Yes, yeah, and we could see already against Worthing he scored a good goal and he had exactly um, the same chances uh, in previous games. Uh, I think Chelmsford on the left side he had one and um, against uh, Weymouth he had one on this side. Uh, so he always brings himself in good positions and that's why we put him in this position where, he, where he's playing at the moment because he's a massive threat there. He's still a young player needs to learn many, many things but um, I'm more than happy with him because He's contributing a lot uh, to our team and to our squad at the moment and that's what we need from every single player. I know that you're not getting carried away and you're only taking one game at a time. Uh, next week, of course, it's Bath City away. Uh, but how do you think this result affects the, the, the picture for the rest of the motion? I would say it's not changing because uh, it's still a long way to go. So everyone knows um, how, how many games we have to play. So we have now nine games in four weeks. That's, I don't know, more than enough. We have a good squad. We have a big squad at the moment. We, have, we are not struggling with too many injuries. So that's what might help in the next four weeks. Uh, but we need to take one game at a time because you can see we play now very far away at Bath and we play far away at Chippenham straight away three days later. So we will and have to use the whole squad there and um, that's that's a good thing of football. If you have a good squad and you can use it, that you should do it. You could see Heaven was make, uh, or made four changes today. We made three changes today. They had a tough game on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night at Taunton. I was a bit surprised. I heard left yesterday an interview from from their captain, he said, like, oh, that's a perfect game to play against Absolute after this defeat at Taunton. And I was thinking, like, wow, um, they must be or must have much confidence um, to say, like, yeah, we want to go to Absolute and beat them after a tough, tough, tough uh, day and night at, at, at Taunton. So I was a little bit surprised there because uh, I think this, this could be a problem, like you could see today. So we caused them a lot of problems. But we need to look at us, and um, that's what we do. And we know this uh, this game will be tough at Bath, like it has been last season. 
uh, as well and um, they will throw everything at us uh, because they want to push for the playoffs and they are a little bit out at the moment there so they need the win as well and uh, then we go to Chippenham they fight for their lives not to get relegated so there are so many more tough upcoming games and uh, we just need to be ready and need to be up for it and, and take one game at a time. Well, that's the end of yet another Around the Ground, and I really hope you have enjoyed watching. Of course, full time here at the Cufflink Stadium, 2 0 to Absolute United. A really entertaining encounter between two top sides. Uh, both performances from both sides done really well, and I think the way they played does show why they're first and third. Uh, Absolute, especially, really press resistant, done well under pressure, passing the ball about nicely. One team they do remind me of, actually, is Arsenal, obviously, red and white and top of the league. Uh, but the way they played, as I said, press resistant, they weren't just knocking the ball up the pitch to their strikers like lots of non-league uh, sides do. They were really passing it around nicely, passing it around well, uh, and both of them goals were nicely worked. Of course, the first one was a tap-in, but the build-up to it was done, uh, was done well. And the second goal as well, solo goal, great run from the youngster who scored that. After the penalty miss in the second half, I think they did drop off Ebbsfleet and haven't started to pick up the pace. They had several chances. Uh, of course, they didn't score. Ebbsfleet defended well and then they went on to get that second. Um, but yeah, no, overall, really good performance from the fleet. And I definitely can see them getting promoted now. It would be a massive uh, failure if they were to blow it from here. I must say, top of the league, uh, as I said before, they're nine points clear now They're of uh, second. They're 13 points clear of third. They're in a really good position. They've got five away games now to go and play, which is obviously going to be tough. But if they can get through them, then I can see it being a pretty easy route to the final, uh, you know, fin final destination, which is promotion. Uh, thank you very much to Ed, who works here at Ebsley, is the media guy, for inviting me down. We've had a great time. It's a great club. If you did enjoy watching, please make sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.